Hello, hello. Sounds like we have a little bit of an internet problem today. Sorry guys, this happens sometimes and there's not much we can do about it. But we will be rocking today. All right, hope you guys had a good start of your uh, Tuesday morning with some rock music as usual, and that's how we start. Uh, welcome to the Profit Lab Podcast, guys. Uh, I am your host, Marie Tarosian, certified 10X coach, CFO and auditor, a certified public accountant, and a chartered global management accountant. I serve the entrepreneurial community through my two businesses, my CPA firm, Marie Tarosian CPA, and my management consulting company, The Profit Lab. The Profit Lab Podcast uh, serves to expand our mission to empower entrepreneurs by bringing their stories to the masses. We are thrilled to tell your story to inspire, empower, and uplift other entrepreneurs. Uh, check out our website where we have the audio version of uh, the podcast, obviously not the show, uh, theprofitlab.biz slash podcast. Uh, we launched the podcast and the show on August 2nd, where I spoke about my entrepreneurial journey and so, some of the the, the the things that I learned during that journey so far. Um, so I plan to bring entrepreneurs from all walks of life um, every, every show, uh, every week. So if you want to be a guest on my show or, you know, of someone who should be on my show and that I should interview, uh, send a request to support at theprofitlab.biz. Uh, today is November 15. Uh, it is our 14th episode and we are live on Facebook uh, at the Profit Lab Biz, sorry, at the Profit Lab Biz, uh, on LinkedIn, Marie Tercy on CPA CGMA and on my YouTube channel, Marie Tercy on CPA. Um, and we do run the, 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 the reruns on different channels as well on Facebook and, and LinkedIn, different channels that I have. Uh, so make sure whichever channel you're following us on uh, or watching us or listening to us, Make sure to subscribe, follow, like, and share so that everyone else can actually hear the, the information that we are sharing today and the stories of the entrepreneurs that we are uh, bringing here. So with that, today my guest is Carlos Polito. He is a business consultant for 26 years. He has led more than 50 process and profitability, profitability <laughs> improvement projects, helping organizations maximize performance and improve efficiencies. Carlos, welcome to the Profit Lab podcast. Thank you, Marie. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We, we, we are very excited to have you. Um, so, uh, Carlos, I mean, you and I know each other for a while, but, you know, for the sake of, you know, our guests our, and, uh, you know, and, and our viewers and our listeners. So I always start every my question uh, to entrepreneurs like, Tell us a little bit more about you, the person, Carlos, the person, not necessarily the business owner or, or the, the professional. I leave it open to you how you want to, how you want to explain that. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Marie. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, and that's a great show, by the way. I've watched uh, a few episodes and uh, very exciting. Thank you for everything you do for the community. Thank you. And well, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I was going to say that I am, I've, like you said, I've been a, a consultant for 26 years. I always say that I, I've never had a real job. I've always been a consultant. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, I've never had like a, yeah, uh, you know, a, 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 an industry related job. So uh, I started out with Arthur Anderson back in the day, 1996, uh, until Enron happened. I'm sure most of you know about Enron. Uh, that was September tw uh, 2002. And then I decided to open my my own firm, Arconas. Uh, that was yeah, September, October, two thousand two, and I've I've had Arconas since then. Um, I am married. I've been married for about for twelve years now. I have two awesome. daughters, uh, six, seven years old and eight years old. Uh, beautiful daughters, beautiful wife, uh, wonderful wife. And uh, I live in Doral. I work in Doral, but I of course I I travel a yeah. lot. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I go where wherever you know. Of course, we land a project, right? So lately, I've been traveling a lot. We have now a prospect in Hawaii. So as, as I told you a couple of weeks ago, I was there. I've been there twice for the past two months, and uh, so it's a long flight. And I was only there for like three days. So people are like, "Are you yeah. not bringing your bathing suit?" I'm like, "No, I, I wish I could. I didn't even have time to go to the beach. <laughs> I mean, I did see the beach, but I never went to the beach. You know, like." 
Uh, but anyway, so I, uh, I've been focusing uh, most of my career in, like you said, you know, profitability, cost and performance management. That's all we do. A lot of companies pretty much, uh, they claim that they know the bottom line profit profitability, but they don't really know what makes up for that detailed profitability, right? By product, by region, by channel. So what we do is that we come in and then we uh, detail the profitability by each one of those dimensions, like we say. And then we provide recommendations on how to, how to maximize the performance and profitability of those uh, services or products. Yes, that, that's awesome. Awesome. And and yeah, we, we, you and I have talked about, you know, some of those those things as we can get geeky about those numbers sometimes. But, uh, but for the sake of the show right now, I'm going to skip through for now and then I'm going <laughs> to go into. Um, so, you know, one of the things that, you know, uh, it's important to, to note, note that, you know, what makes us entrepreneurs, like why would we start in our own little journey? Why would we just not s switch and go to work for somebody else? So, for example, you started, you know, working for um, Arthur Anderson and, you know, yes, you were doing project management that let's say, why did you decide to start your own business right after that? Like, you know, what is that motivation that made you decide to do that instead of, uh, you know, going to another company and just working for them as a project yeah. manager? Yeah, no, thanks. I think that's a great question. Uh, matter of fact, I, I did have the option when I left uh, Arthur Anderson back in 2002. I did have the option to go to other firms. Mm -hmm. However, I said to myself, you know what? I think I have, you know, I, I had at the time I had worked for Arthur Anderson for seven years. I said to myself, you know what? I think I need the freedom. I think I need the uh, um I, I, I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to have the flexibility <laughs> to, right? I mean, I I didn't know what that entailed at the time, but then I found out that yeah, I did have I do have some freedom. However, when you're when you're your own boss, right, you have to work weekends. You, your mind yes. is always going, right? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, so you know this, right? Of course. So weekends, I'm like working or I'm thinking about work. You know. My wife goes, what are you doing? Well, I'm writing some notes. I thought about something right on a Saturday night. You know? so, so that's what happens. However, I think it's rewarding the fact that you say, okay, so this is for me, right? This is for my own firm. Yes. Uh, sometimes I thought about, oh, did I make the right decision? But I, I think I did um, because, of course, it's always great to have some uh, – uh, stability, right? When you have, when, you, when you're when you're an employee, right? You you got your check every month, but when you're an entrepreneur, you you don't know when that check is going to come, right? So uh, yeah. you have to really yes. work hard at it, and uh, you have to be consistent. Yep. Yeah, I, I I'm totally with you on that, and and you know, again, you and I have talked so many times before that, but it, it, this is a consistent thing that you know every guest that I've had on board and, you know, when they, when I ask this question, it's always a somewhat similar, right? So it's always that I needed the freedom, whether it was the financial freedom or the time freedom, right? And at the end, we do end up working a lot harder, yeah. but at the same time, we are working towards a specific goal, specific mission that keeps us going. And you said something very cool. You said, well, one, once in a while, I wonder, did I do the right thing? I think <laughs> yeah, and I started my business much later, right? You you started way before me. So you know, a few years uh, when I first started it in, in, in um, during COVID, right? Because I had just launched the, the business and and COVID hit and everything was locked down. I'm like, ah, oh, you know, did I really make the right right choices? Because I was like, how do I even find a client in the middle of COVID? Did I make the right choice? Um, and then you know, every time there's hardship, you know, you wonder that. And then you know, at the end of the day like you said something brings us back I'm like no nah, i'd rather have the freedom i'd rather have that up and down it's okay because it keeps me focused on that mission you know and that makes all the difference um another cool cool thing that you said and i wanted to to pinpoint that is you said uh, you know there's that stability or maybe the assumption of a s stability when you're working for someone and, and I say assumption because we think we are going to be there forever or we're going to be an employee of a person, you know, of a company forever. But if there's no forever, they can let, let you go anytime. So we might as well work for ourselves. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you're totally right. I, I thought about that, too, because uh, like you said, you know, especially nowadays that companies are just uh, moving very quickly. And, uh, yeah. you know, those public companies, they all, the, you know they care a lot about of course the uh, financial results so they said oh god yes. we need to reduce expenses and that's actually where we come in i mean i, I ironically uh, 
uh, I think most companies are stuck in the past. Yes. And uh, because they they think the easiest way to cut cost is just to let people go. Yep. But that's not the right way because when you let people go, you might be just cutting both uh, meat and bones, uh, right? So you want to make sure that you only cut that extra, you know, uh, 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 fat, right? Yes. <laughs> and not the actual meat. Uh, yeah. So, and that's what happens when you when you when you let people go, right? You have to be very strategic and you have to be a bit more specific and say, okay, so. What are the areas? What are the processes within the company that are not adding value? Absolutely. And and when you hear all these large companies, oh, you know, Facebook nowadays, I don't know if you heard I, about I it. Was, yes, yes. They're letting yes. go about 11,000 people, I think. I, I know they have about, I think, over 100,000 people, but now they're letting go about 11,000 11, people. So that's a little over 10% of their workforce. That's a, that's a huge, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, decision, I think. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with you. And um, it's very sad to see that, you know, some of these big companies that should have all the processes in place and their profitability all managed properly, uh, they can just go out and just let go, I don't know, so much of uh, their, their their workforce um, and just expect things to just go normal. And, you know, smaller business owners like us, you know, we just can't even, we won't even think about that. We're like, no, our people are our best people. It makes us who we are. And you know, we're serving our clients top notch because we want to have these great people with us. Like I would not want to let go of any of my people unless they're just not doing a great job, let's say, or they're just, you know, they are that, that fat, they're not adding value to my clients. Um, so, and that would be a very strategic choice versus just like, Hey, you know, I don't know how to manage my, 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 my finances. I just want to get rid of a bunch of people. Um, you know, you know, it's yeah. the people make the business. Your people are going to be taking care of your clients and, if you're getting rid of everybody, you can DIY everything. <laughs> Say what happened yeah. in our house. Totally, Marie. And you know what? Some people <laughs> say, well, but this, you know, maybe, I don't know. How do you know? I mean, yeah, they picked 11,000 people because they were just not, what, they were not qualified or, or they were just not adding value. I believe that if, let's say, I mean, I think they were hired for some reason, right, at, this, at first. Right. So, I mean, I'm not talking about that specific company, but any other company, right? General. And yeah. uh, what you can do, I think everybody's good at something, right? So what you, especially at those large companies. And so yes. what you can do, what those companies can do, they can actually say, okay, so what are the skills? What are the uh, the goals of each Love one it. of the, the, the groups of people that are working on the different areas? So how do yeah. I redeploy those people uh -huh. to the right areas where they can actually add value and maximize yep. the efficiency and the performance of the business. I love that. I'm so glad you said that. I'm so glad you said that. Um, and and I've experienced it myself too. Like you know, uh, you know, in situations where it, it would be a better fit, let's say for me to have done something else, you know, at specific times in my career. But you know, that was not the situation, right? And um, you know, and and it just very difficult. And then in certain cases, I have been the person to have to make a decision saying, well, uh, this dude does not have you. They're playing. They're not, they're wasting time while they're on the job. They're not really uh, fitting with the, the culture of our, our, our company, for example, where, you know, and just had to let go versus the person that's like, well, they have other skills. We can move them to another department. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think it's very important to see where the best skills are. And by the way, I'll put it out there. Anyone that's getting, <laughs> <laughs> laid off and you have great skills and you're you're teachable uh i will hire you <laughs> exactly. i want to see how fast i will hire you <laughs> i'm gonna put it out there um so with that so all right so another question i usually ask carlos is you know what are what are one of the biggest things that have made a major impact in your life and it could be anything personal business you know whatever what has been a big impact in your life i i leave it open because i'm sure you think of one thing and you know whatever it is you can tell us about it i i think you know i i can think of a couple two things actually uh one was the uh birth of my daughters i think that, that was a big impact <laughs> and the way the way i guess i look at it now i look at life now i'm like so every step I take in life, both uh, personal life and professional, I say like, is this something my daughters would be proud of me, right? Mm -hmm. Is this action I'm taking? Amazing. You know, I feel like more 
uh, I feel like I have more responsibility, not only to raise them properly, but also to be a great example for them and for my family and for society, right? So I'm always saying, yeah. I want to make sure that every step I take is very, you know, uh, it, it's the right step and uh, I'm adding value. Uh, so that was the, you know, this this happened, you know, like eight years ago. <laughs> and, um, and then the next, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was the pandemic, of course, that was another yes. big event. It, it took a, a big toll on my, you know, of course, my, my company. Of course. And uh, we pretty much didn't have any businesses, uh, any business at that point. I wow. mean, we were, of course, we were very busy. We were out there, we were trying to pivot ourselves to see what other service related to what we do we could offer sure. however it was very tough it was it was really tough to to uh find business uh and because at the time we had just finished a couple of important projects and then that was early march 2020 mm -hmm. and the pandemic was just a couple of weeks uh, after that right started a couple of weeks after that so i was yes. like wow you know so <laughs> That I guess I learned a couple of things and said, "Wow, you know, I better, you know, we better get uh, prepared for these type of events in the next yes. uh, few years or in the next few months to make sure that we're ready to face any of these challenges." By by what? By first of all, making sure that we have a solid base of uh, customers, a solid base of uh, partners, to make sure that we have a great networking our network yes. of, uh, of of partners or prospects and clients. To make sure that we are, uh, you know, we can thrive in in any economy, um, yeah. because I, I believe that of course the, the uh, services that we offer to the community or to the businesses uh, are great in both uh, in in a good economy or in a, or in in a, bad, not yeah. so a good economy, right? So because we we look at costs, we look at expenses, we look at the efficiency of the processes. So yes. um, I believe that we, you know we could do well in both uh, economies, but that wasn't the case back in the pandemic. Uh, <laughs> it was a challenge. And of course, our typically our, our, our projects were, were completed on site. Uh, so if we had a client in Dallas or in Seattle, we were there on site almost every oh, week. Wow, okay. And so things changed now. Of course, most consultants now are doing a lot of work remote. Virtual. However, yes. I don't believe in in doing 100% of the work remotely, right? Because you have to be able to shake somebody's hand. You know, when of you course. sell an important project, you have to be there. When you kick off the project, you have to be there. When you Absolutely. deliver the results, and then you you validate the uh, the data so that people you can receive fa uh, feedback face to face. Absolutely, I I, I love that. I'm, I'm so glad you said that, and that's that's kind of how I started as well. Especially when I when I'm serving here in, in the Florida market. You know, I guess it's a little bit easier to to travel and, and, and you know, mm -hmm. but I, I did set up my business to be pretty much virtual. Uh, but I do. I, I like what you said. I do love to shake hands and be able to see the person, you know, at least in the, you know, in, in, in the beginning stages and, and you know, when you're closing out. Uh, but the good thing is that in, in, with the firm and or whatever I'm doing coaching, it's like a continuous thing. So I'm seeing them all the time. But in a project based, you know, and I did that as a consultant in 20 end of 2018 2019 yes I, I actually wanted to be there i wanted to be able to, to speak with the ceo myself i wanted to talk to each and every individual myself sometimes mm -hmm. it's just a, a very different uh feel right so yeah that yeah, right on right on my friend um all right so now let's talk a little bit about the type of clients and customers that you are serving i know there's different industries specifically that you work with even though you can serve any industry but there are specific industries that that you are focusing on right now what are those industries and the customers that you work with yeah thanks maria that's a great question uh, matter of fact uh thinking about the past uh, few years we've had a large um government a, a two government clients here in Miami and in Seattle, Washington. Uh, we've had a, a couple of large, uh, we had a CPG company up in Canada. We now have, we're after a large CPG company here in, uh, in, in the U.S., in Chicago, in the Chicago area. Uh, we're also working with uh, actually uh, a couple of small firms here in Miami locally. Uh, one, one is an advertising firm and the other one is just a telecom company. They're both awesome. uh, small. One of them is just a six employee firm and the other one is just a 30 employee company. And uh, but our services, like you said before, can pretty much uh, uh, add value to any industry. Right. So 
Yes. Um, yeah, we have done work for insurance companies. We have done work for healthcare companies. We have done work for manufacturing companies. So it pretty much, uh, you know, it, it, it can be done for any any different industry. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, totally. And and I know you and I work when we, you know, at the chamber and I was, you know, on the inside, I guess I was staff and you were there as a, a volunteer, you know, as a, a member uh, we worked on some of the efficiencies there and we kind of worked together. It was a very cool project. I think that's where we connected so much yeah. on the numbers and the geeking on those numbers. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, by the way, Mario, I, I missed an important industry we're after also is the banking yes. industry. Mostly, yes. Of course, yes. We're, not, we're not after the large banks. We're after the uh, community banks. Uh, right. Yeah. Because, I mean, those, a lot of the community banks now, they have to have a BSA department, which is the uh, compliance department. Okay. And sometimes it, it can typically be about 10% of the workforce. And that department does not add, does not bring any revenue for the bank. Right. It's just uh, compliance. Yeah. Exactly. So so that's why those community banks, they have to, and, and typically banks have very uh, small margins. So they have to be very tight with their decision making and the okay. uh, cost management practices. So that's why uh, those are a good targets uh, for, for us as well. Perfect. This is great. So I'm going to take this moment to kind of, uh, you know, um, you know, read out for those who are listening because they won't be able to see some of the banners that we're running here. Uh, guys, if you're listening, um, you're in one of these industries, specifically in, you know, small banking, you know, please feel free to email uh, Carlos at cpulido, P-U-L-I-D-O, at arconas.com, A-R-K-O-N-A-S.com. So that's cpulido at arconas.com so uh, let me also let you guys know about their website uh it's arconas.com and also analytics sorry let me reread it correctly analytics p-e-r-f-m-g-m-t.com analytics p-e-r-f-m-g-m-t so basically uh performance management <laughs> correct correct yeah, the, the name was too long so that's yes. another website we have, Marie. That's for, uh, I'm there with Gary Cokins. Gary Cokins is a, a person I've known for about 20 years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is a subject matter expert in um, cost management and profitability. So he's a, a speaker, he's written books. And so I'm okay. there with him uh, so that we can actually promote uh, the profitability and cost management services to the community. And we have free articles there that people can download. Awesome. And, a few videos on on gary speaking at different events so feel free to reach out to us we're more than happy to offer you know just a consultation uh, uh, if you have any specific problems related to cost profitability process uh, you know uh, issues at your company awesome awesome that's amazing so so like to pivot a little bit now back to kind of the entrepreneurial journey um, tell us, and, and you kind of mentioned a little bit, but maybe there's other challenges that you may have had, you know, would you share with us some of those uh, challenges you've faced over the past, you know, so many years of being in business, you know, on your own? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, another challenge we had was uh, the lack of focus, I think, because uh, we were mm. uh, trying to, okay, so how do we generate revenue, right? So we were very desperate yes. at some point. And we said, let's stay, let's let's just say yes to everything, right? So, and uh, we learned, like we said, we can't really um, say yes because sometimes we just found ourselves in uh, participating in projects where we didn't really have that much of an expertise, and uh, so we had to reach out to other people, of course, so that we can deliver of the course. project successfully. But it was a struggle at that time. And that's why we said, no, let's go back and focus on our cost and profitability performance management services, which is exactly what we do. And it's, it's, right. uh, it's what we are, we're good at. And uh, so I think that was a major challenge when we tried to, you know, like pivot and to say, okay, so what else can we do? You know, we started doing <laughs> okay. uh, m and type of projects. We started doing uh, uh, journey mapping and, 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 you know, it, it is related, right? Because journey mapping, you define the steps and all that, right? But it's not, you know, cost and profitability management. Indirectly, of course, when you improve the journey map of a company, the customer right. journey of a company, you improve performance and, and cost, right? So I think that was another challenge, the lack of focus. Another challenge 
we faced was related to, um, you know, not having the right partners, right? And uh, when I say partners, I mean, uh, you know, the, the right software vendors, the right uh, referral partners. Uh, right, you know, right, when, of course. When referral partners for us are maybe accounting firms, maybe okay. other consulting firms that don't necessarily do what we do. Of course. They, they target the same clients we do. So of course. Um, by partnering with them, we can actually offer, uh, you know, our services either together or they can just, uh, you know, let Extended. us know that, you know, one right. of our clients is, is interested in your services, right? So, so I right. think that was an, another challenge we had where uh, we were kind of facing, so how do we, right, how <laughs> do we uh, connect to the right partners? So, um, and we were, thank God, we have now, I think, the right, you know, uh, partners uh, that we can rely on. And uh, yeah, that's why, that's why we have been uh, successful in the past few years. Awesome. That's awesome. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, I know the focus is definitely something that you learn over time. I think you, we, um, we get sometimes so many different people offering different things and then they kind of distract you from your main focus and the goal of your services. <laughs> so we got, you know, we learn to yeah. be selective of, okay, no, this is the right fit and this is the right partnership. And this is, you know, uh, so I totally get you. I, I think I got hit with those in 2020 and I was very distracted as well. And then in 2021, I, I was able to refocus as well. So I, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, Maria. And that also, of course, translates into cash flow issues. Of course. Translates into, uh, <laughs> problems, internal problems, right? I mean, all other challenges that are a consequence of uh, not having the right partners, not having the right marketing strategy also, right? So. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. And um, we can work on those too. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We've been having some cool discussions on those as well, you and I. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can work on those too. Um, okay. And um, so uh, before we end the show, usually one of the questions I also ask is like, what are um, three things you can recommend for any entrepreneur, entrepreneur that's just starting out or thinking to start? What are three, uh, you know, recommendations you would make? It's It could be, you know, something from your experience, you know, a challenge, or it could be something that you learned along the way or a skill you, you learned along the way that helped you in your running your business for so many years. Yeah, no, great. I can think of, um, uh, you know, organization, I think is very okay. important to mm -hmm. get organized and uh, have everything, you know, like a, a marketing plan, uh, a business plan, uh, have a... Hire the right accountant, uh, the right lawyer. <laughs> um, I think that's all related to organization. Uh, define yes. your your uh, target market. Um, always learn. You know, make sure you you make sure you know it's okay to say no. Oh right? yes. <laughs> you to, yeah, you don't have to say yes to everything. That's that's what I did in the past, and uh, it didn't work. Uh, so it's okay to say no, because if you're focused, you have to say no to the things that are not related to your focus, right? To your strategy. Yes, yes. Uh, so I think that's important. Uh, pick the right partners, like I was saying before. I think, yes. uh, and, and, and a kind of accountant could be a partner also, of course, of right? Of course, And yes. uh, a, a lawyer could be an, a partner. Um, and I believe those are the three uh, recommendations. Of course, there's many other things, but <laughs> make, and make sure you have uh, a tight control of your costs, right? And, and profits, right? Make sure that you, because a lot of companies claim, oh gosh, you know, I'm increasing my revenue. Uh, I jumped from a million dollars to now $1.5 million. I mean, it, that's fine. Uh, that's always good, right? If you increase revenue, but if your costs are also increasing, it, you're, right. not doing any, you're not really adding value to the bottom line. So the most important number is your bottom line number, right? The profitability. So you can yes. be selling $10 million, but if you're only making $100,000, I'd rather have you sell a million dollars and earn $100,000. Right, right. Oh, you you hit it right on. And this is, this is what I, I try to explain where the cost like the cost ratio is going up at a higher percentage than the revenue ratio going up 
and it's like the flow chart, it's going to be like this. <laughs> You're actually ma making your profitability getting smaller, right? Like the, pro the it's going like narrowing down instead of going like this. <laughs> Exactly. Also, <laughs> make so, sure yeah. you know, when we talk about profitability, also make sure that you you measure net profit and not gross profit, right? Because net profit is everything what you get to keep in your pockets. Yes. yes. I I think my internet is struggling again, but it's okay. We we. <laughs> we're able to capture most of it yes carlos congratulations uh, to to deliver uh, on delivering you know excellence to your clients and is there any last thoughts you you wanted to share before we wrap up the show i'm sorry any what marie yes um is there any other last minute thoughts you wanted to share uh before oh, we yeah, wrap yeah. up the Thank show you. Uh, yes, I was going to say that I think uh, 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 typically a lot of companies are drowning in data, but they lack information. Make sure you, you generate meaningful information so that you can make informed decisions that maximize profitability. Awesome. That's that's a very, very good tip. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you so much for being our, our guest today. And to all our viewers and our listeners, thank you so much for joining us today. Please remember to subscribe, follow, like, and share this content on whichever platform uh, channel that you are watching or listening to us on. Uh, let's empower each other through our experiences. And until the next episode, have a wonderful and blessed rest of your week.